Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to detail the story of rapper Project Bo. Bo's family would originally come from the South, coming from Louisiana. A lot of African American families migrated in the 60s, and most of Bo's family would settle in the Pueblo del Rio housing project. And his family members that didn't live in the Pueblo del Rio, they would settle in what became the Family Swan Bloods Hood. The Pueblo del Rio housing projects was constructed in 1941 and was originally designed to house low income laborers and house people in the military. But the demographics were later changed and by the 60s, many African Americans would start to arrive in the area and Bo's mom would be one of those residents to move in in the 60s. Bo would later be born and grow up in the Pueblo del Rio housing projects and grew up around the OGs from the projects that was in the gang from the area. The gang was called the Pueblo Bishop Bloods. The Pueblo Bishop Bloods came an official gang by the 70s and would later go to war with several Crip gangs on the east side of South Central and a Serenio gang called 38th Street and once an ally, the Bloodstone Villains. Being in the streets early, Bo would see a lot and do a lot and he would be frontlining for his gang. When he was a teenager, the Pueblos first went to war with their once ally, the Bloodstone Villains, when allegedly a member of the Pueblos shot and killed a Bloodstone Villain in the 2000s. This made Bo have to jump harder in the streets with his hood gaining more rivals. But besides what was going on in his hood, Bo was trying to survive and make money. This led to him robbing a bank. But eventually, two months later, that bank robbery would lead to his arrest and Bo would end up receiving eight years for it. Bo would be in prison from 2007 to 2015. While Bo was in prison in 2010, FBI agents and LAPD officers arrested over 40 members of the Pueblo Bitch of Bloods after a two-year investigation called Operation Family Ties. Members of the Pueblos were indicted on federal racketeering charges and they were also accused of using mob tactics such as violence, murders, bribery, extortion, gang-related shootings, and witness intimidation. The Pueblos were also accused of harassing law enforcement officers who patrolled the area. They are the first gang to be hit in a gang sweep that involved the Organized Crime RICO Act. It's called Operation Family Ties because many of the targets are related. Live near each other in a South LA housing complex, that's according to police, it's become a haven for gang activity. By the end of the day, nearly four dozen are walked off in cuffs and taken to jail. Feds say all are members or associates of a South Los Angeles gang called the Pueblo Bishop Bloods. This is their home turf, the Pueblo Del Rio housing project. And in this 88-page federal racketeering indictment, agents say the gang is involved in drug trafficking, gun trafficking, armed robbery, extortion, assaults, intimidating witnesses, and murders are pushed here on a daily basis. And that older gangsters with nicknames such as Dr. Dirt, Weetamack, Too Tall, and Lee Dog enlist younger gang members to do the dirty work. Gators say much of the illegal business is conducted on playgrounds in the complex and in the shadow of a nearby elementary school. Feds insist these busts will make a significant dent in the Pueblo Bishop's operation and drastically change the complexion of the neighborhood. In prison, Bo would have several altercations with several different people, even his celly, which almost led to a deadly incident. Dinner time. So you're out chow, you're coming back from chow, right? Yeah, when we walked, we, we, we went to chow, we walked to the chow hall. I guess his, he was lured here, so they went before us. So on the way coming back, the dude's scary. So I'm like, I see the dude waiting on, I, you know, we coming out the chow hall and I'm walking around the track, like, we get to our building, I see the dude waiting on the side, like, he letting everybody pass him. And I'm like, oh, I tell the homie, like, are you waiting? But I, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, I know he got something. Cause he's too scary to wait to fight. He don't want to fight me. We could have been for the cell gang of times. So when, once I get close by him, like, what, but like walking this, like from here to there, he jumped down like, oh, what's up now? Fight now. He got the two knives in his hand. I'm like, eh, I just took off on him. Like, rushed him. We started fighting. Yeah. Got ugly. Didn't he try to throw the knife by you? Yeah. Threw the knife, but did throw it by me. And you said one CO saved your ass one One, one CO named Nettles. I'll never forget Nettles, man. Shout out, Mr. Nettles, man, wherever you are, man. Shout out, bro. Because it was, it was ugly. But another CO said that you were making stabbing Making motion. stabbing gestures yeah. while I was fighting, but he lied. But thank God Nettles. Thank has. God Nettles seen that, man. Thank, thank, thank God he's seen everything. Because I would have been doing another nine years. Nine on that? Yeah. Hell yeah, I would have got, that's more than I got for the robbery. But to keep his mind right in prison, Bo got into reading and even wrote a book. But the biggest thing he did, he started rapping and writing music. 
After getting out of prison, Bo would start working and dropping music, and stuck with music for years. By 2020, Bo would build a relationship with Sacramento rapper Sam L, who would eventually sign him to his record label Banked Up Records. But this relationship would lead to him beefing with CML rivals like Old Park Blood rapper Snubs. Hey Snubs, check this up. I don't know what gave you the audacity to speak on Project Bo, blood, but you did. So all I gotta say to you is this, blood. I'm in the hood every day on Pueblo. Uh, you better hit J Rock up, blood, and ask J Rock about me. Huh? I better take your lives back to Oak Park. In the last year, Bo would start doing his first shows with CML and the rest of the artists on Banked Up Records, and even plans to do a collab album with CML. Bo was still active in his community and trying to make it out of music. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.